afternoon, guys. Hi, he wasn't kidding. I, I can't see you guys at the top there. Um, I feel like Tim Urban. I think that that's just happened to me, right? A couple of weeks ago, these guys contacted me. Hey, you want to speak at this? This is great. And then yesterday, Kendra called. Okay, you know, you're coming for a rehearsal last night. Where's your slides? I was like, ah, oh, slides. Um, okay, so don't judge me on my slides today, please, because, you know, it took me like five minutes to come up with. And anyway, so... Um, so my name is Amran, uh, I head innovation for Maybank and essentially that role is, one of my roles is to really look at the future a little bit and then try to figure out now how does that impact banks, right? How is that going to change? Um, so I'm going to tell you guys a story. It's a story about you guys, right? It's a story about you guys maybe three years from now. So. You've graduated, you've gone to a whole bunch of interviews, and because you're fantastic with your CGPA, you've got a job. So this is your first day at work, right? And your first day at work, you've met the HR person. So he's telling you about, okay, here's your boss, here's your office, um, well, it's probably a cubicle, you've, here's your people you're going to work with, your role, responsibility, and all that. And then he says, okay, and don't forget to log in to the corporate website. And that's where, um, you know, you can... Log in and check your salary over there. And also, don't forget to download our corporate app. You know, you, that's how you access your money. So he said, cool. So you go over to your new place. You meet up uh, with your new colleagues, make some friends. Um, you log in. You make sure that you've, you've got all that sorted out. And yeah, you can see, you know, your, your, your balance is there. Come lunchtime with your new buddies. You say, hey, let's go for lunch. So you go to lunch. You go to the restaurant next door. After you're done, you know, you go up to the... Um, to the cashier, you see the QR code, and you pay with your phone. Your buddies are quite nice to you because you're new. You say, hey, don't lah. It's your first day. Let's kind of split the bill. So he said, fine. So all your new buddies take out their phones. You know, they put it at your face. It recognizes you, and then they all pay you back. So, you know, then you go back to, to the office. So now, at this stage, you're still living at home. So you don't have a car. So you take the MRT to work. Right? You go to the MRT, you go to the turnstile, you take your phone out, you just tap that, you go in, you go home, same thing. So a couple of weeks go by, one of the weekends you decided to treat yourself to a weekend away. Right? You don't have a car, so you sign up to one of these easy rental cars, right? So like, like a SoCar service. You go online, register, put your IC up, it gets approved, you use your phone to unlock the car, you go off for the weekend. So there you go. A couple of months go by and then you find this promotion for a holiday, right? And then you say, oh, wow, that's cool. Um, it's like 5,000 bucks to go to Italy for a whole trip. So you decided, yeah, maybe that's something I want to do. You take your phone out, there's a little advisor app there and says, hey, you know what? I want to go on holiday. So the, 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 the app asks you, you know, how much is it? When is it? So you say, it's about 5,000. I'd probably go about middle of next year. So the app then tells you, you know what? Not a problem. Um, that's a nice little goal. If you put aside about 200 a month, you should be able to get it in time. So you say, okay, cool. So every month after that, you know, the app kind of reminds you, hey, you were saving for the holiday. You still want to do that? So, yeah. So you, you, know, you keep transferring money across. So that's gone on. So you're going day to day. You're going to work. Everything's cool. And then iPhone, then Apple launches the new iPhone, right? By then it's, I don't know, iPhone 20, iPhone XX. It's seven grand, right? So, of course, you don't care. You and your, your, your buddies go over to the Apple store and look at it and say, wow, this is great. You see the scan, the, the, the QR code, okay, I'm going to buy this, right? You try to scan it and then it pops up and says, you know what? Actually, you don't have enough money, but don't worry. Your credit is pretty good. You've got a 5,000 ringgit um, approved. Do you want to buy it still? And he's like, hmm, I'm not sure. What about that holiday? He says, no, no problem. You know, if you only put aside X amount, you used to make it. I say, fine. So, you trigger that you get yourself the brand new iPhone XX. And then you go home, you're all happy. Um, so a couple of months go by, and you know, another weekend comes up, you feel like another holiday, but the SoCa thing is quite popular. There's no cars available. The following weekend, and the car's not available again. Your mom's been complaining that you, know, you don't send her to the market because you, know, you don't have a car. So being the responsible son, is okay, lah, since I'm staying rent free, maybe I should get a car. So you start Googling, and then you find some cars, right? And then you're not sure, well, can I afford this? So again, you whip out your phone, you take out the, your advisor, and you say, you know, what car can I afford? And the guy says, um, anything from 
below 100,000 should be okay. So, all right. So you go Google, you go to look at the ranges, and you find like a nice little Proton 3 that you want to go get. Um, and then you go to the showroom, and the guy says, yep, our credit's good. Just click on it. Within three months, you get delivery. A few years go by. The app pops up and says, you know what? You've been quite responsible. Um, every month, they notice that there is a bit of balance in your, in your account. Do you want to invest that? And you say, well, I don't know. I've never invested before, right? Um, what do I do? So, well, you can either say, you know, do you want to buy a house? Or do you just want to save for a, for a rainy day? What kind of risk appetite do you want, right? So I said, okay, maybe I'll, I'll save, save up for a house. And the app will tell you, hey, you know what? Why don't you put 30% of it on something slightly riskier, right? Something like a peer-to-peer -peer lending um, or some, some, some um, riskier shares and the others on some nice fixed deposit for a fixed amount. So we said, okay, I'll do that for now because I, I don't really know how to, how to do all this, which is fine. And then later on, as you learn about your finances a bit more, you go back to the app and say, you know what, actually, let me look at some of these shares that you've been investing automatically for me. Right? I want to go learn about this. But I only want to invest in shares which is companies which is green, right? because they are more ecologically friendly. So, and it does that. And you go on with your life that way. So this is a scenario that you know, I see happening um, not in the too distant future, right? This is a scenario that I see where throughout your life you're just living your life, doing what you do, and not ever going to the bank even once, not meeting any banker even once, not going to a branch ever. Heck, you don't even know what bank you're banking in. It's just there, right? It's a bit similar to right now when you have your mobile phones. Do you think about your data plan on your Maxis or Cellcom all that much? No, right? You just go get it once. But after that, you, you surf, you buy stuff, you WhatsApp, you chat. Um, and only when the data runs low, you do something about it. But basically, the data is just like a utility, right? It's just there. So what if money and banking is the same thing? It's just kind of there uh, and you don't really worry about it. So how real is that scenario? Well, today, if you get a job and you go to the same HR person, they're going to say, okay, we're going to bank your salary in somewhere, right? So what's your bank account? If you don't have one, okay, go and open a bank account, right? And if that happens, oh, sorry, rewind, right? The topic that I wanted to talk about today, if you don't know, is about the death of banks, which I just described. And if you were to open a bank account, this is what you have to do, right? You go queue up. Um, I took an example of DBS, a competitor bank in Singapore, but to be fair to them, this is the same scenario in any bank, right? You have to queue up, you got to, when, and once you get to the front of the queue, you need to fill up like three pages of documents and your IC and da da da, da and all that stuff. So, so what are the things that banks actually do, right? So one of the things is it holds money. Somebody's got to hold your money, right? And to be able to hold money, um, the regulators in a certain country um, give you a license to do that. So that's why banks are allowed to, and your parents. So, will this ever change? Well, you know what? Um, there is this thing called open banking that's going on. There's even a bank that's opened in Europe where it is just a platform that has the banking license that will comply with the regulatory requirements, but they don't actually service the customers directly. Right? They just allow anybody else to service. So it's not inconceivable that you, in the future you may have companies that provide services to hold your money for you, right? Through platforms like this. So you know, Monash could essentially have a bank underneath it without actually having a bank license because there's somebody else who has that license. So yes, that can happen. Um, now, if you guys had, okay, except for the free lunch today, you would have had to pay either using cash or credit card, right? That's the only mode that we have today. But obviously, you know about the wallets that's coming out. Um, you know, we've got somebody from Prime Keeper today in the house. So they've got these kind of tools now in your app that, you know, you can store money and wave it around or whether it's NFC, whether it's cap, uh, whether you scan a QR code and you get paid. Today, though, um, this is still popular. And how do you get cash? Um, you have to go to one of these machines. And always find Maybank has the longest queues, 
whichever photo that I try to get. Um, and then, you know, once, once you get the cash, then, you know, to even pass it on to your friends and all that, you still have to do this. Um, is it conceivable that you don't need to do this very soon? I think so. You can already do it now, right? So for all of you guys who have bank accounts, uh, whether it's Maybank or anything else, you can transfer money to each other without doing this, right? We don't have the splitting tool, but that's something easy, right? So that's real. What about getting loans and things like that? Well, today, it is still a bit of a pain, right? You still have to go, go to the bank branch, you want to buy a house, or you want to buy a car, you need to fill this stuff, the stuff up. Um, and then you have to you know, give them your salary slips and things like that. But the reality is a lot of banks, including Maybank, we are digitizing a lot of these processes where you don't need to do this. And when I say digitizing the process, it's not just, okay, let's get those five forms right now and then scan it and put it in a PDF and you fill it that way, right? No, digitizing it really means what if the bank already has access to your history, to your work, to your, um, you know, your details and things like that. So that, in fact, um, we, can be, we are able to approve your you know, loans a lot faster, a lot easier, or tell you no a lot faster too, right? So that's, that's something that is already happening. Investments today, right? It's only for those guys who know about it, are interested. But if you're not, it's something that you just don't even understand, you don't even want to do. But I'm sure you've heard about the rise of things like robo-advisors, right? So today, only if you are more wealthy or you bank a lot, we will assign you with a relationship manager or an advisor to go talk to you about all these things. But if you just graduated, and you've just started work, we don't have the capacity to put a person there. But technology right now is allowing us to provide these kind of machines, if you like, that you can just converse with and you help you manage your, your finances. So, so this can happen too. Um, I like this photo, right? It's, it's, it shows that you know, every time you meet with a bank person, you're so happy and joyful, right? <laughs> yeah, not quite. You had to go park your car, you had to queue. By the time you get to this guy, he gives you a stack of papers to fill up and all that, right? So it's not fun. So the reality is when it comes to finances, it's a little bit more like this, right? It's like you've got to manage your bills, you've got money coming in, you're not sure whether you have enough to you know, pay for that iPhone XX, for their personal uh, loans and things like that, it's a bit of a nightmare. But I think we are moving in the direction where eventually that scenario I told you is going to be real. You are going to just get your salary stored somewhere. You're going to have access to it using your phone or your, your watch or whatever else devices get stuck to you by then. Um, you'll be able to interact with a lot of other people financially that way too. Um, Loans are easy. So that's the only thing that banks do, right? You, they, they help deposit, hold your deposits, which we still have to. Um, it helps you pay. You don't need banks for that. Um, you get loans, but you don't have to get a loan directly from a bank. It could be through all these third parties. So I think going back to the question, or is it the death of um, banks? To be honest, unfortunately, as a structure, you still need your telco. Right? You still need to have somebody to manage broadband. You still need to have your money flowing somewhere. And that's what the banks are. So I don't think banks are going to die. But I think it's going to be the death of dealing with the banks. Thank you very much.